Okay, good afternoon everybody. So I will show you how we grow tomatoes digitally. And I will show you why. But I will start very applied, very simple. If you would say, for instance, we have a lot of pota uh, potato plants, tomato plants growing on a table. And I'll tell you, there's one plant hidden there that grows fine. Not fine, but even perfect. Actually, though that particular plant, that variety, that will produce like the most tasty tomatoes ever. And with that tomato, you can actually save the world. So you can change how our world population looks at food. We can keep them away actually from all the junk food. We can give them a fresh, healthy diet. So that's why we are searching for a plant with unique characteristics. But then reality kicks in. So we are searching for that plant and it's hidden there and it grows fast and it has long leaves and it's quite tall. But it's hidden. And what I've seen when I'm working at Wageningen University in research, I've seen PhD students searching for that plant actually. And I was completely amazed, but actually what they have been doing for years and actually are still doing it, they are measuring this plant by hand. So they're ta really taking this plant apart, measuring lengths of leaf. They are scanning leaves to figure out how tall are those leaves. They are measuring the height. They're measuring all kinds of things on that plant. And then they are phenotyping the plant. And this is costing them hours. And those are really smart students. And actually, the same thing is also happening at breeding companies. There's a lot of brain power being wasted. So at the moment I actually came in, I thought, hmm, this should be done in a more efficient way. So there the automated plant phenotyping comes in. Because you need to imagine that on one table with 20 plants, OK, you can do that in a few hours. But what about the thousands of varieties that can be created? How do you, in this batch, find that particular plant that has all it needs? And not only in this stage, but also if it grows taller and if it starts flowering and then it starts producing those fruits that you're actually searching for. So what we propose is let, let's build a greenhouse specifically for this measurement. It's a fully automated greenhouse. Plants are being analyzed on a daily basis. And actually, I am responsible for the construction and design of this greenhouse. And it's now up and running. So I'm going to take you with me to this greenhouse and show you actually how it works. Plants grow, in this case, tomato plant on a conveyor. So we decided to move plants around because we would like to measure those plants. And it's straightforward. We bring this camera, uh, the plant actually in front of a camera. We are working with pictures. And those pictures tell us what the plant is actually doing, and especially what those different plants are doing. So I will hopefully one day show this in real. But today I'm going to rely on some pictures. Imagine plants walking around slowly on these conveyors, entering some of those imaging cabinets, and then they are being imaged. We've got other cabinets. Like this one, this is on a beautiful sunny day, and there the plants are going. So they are queuing up actually, and slowly they start traveling. So, okay, we have pictures. And who has been, uh, who has been in a greenhouse actually? Raise your hand. Okay, that's good. And who has been working on computer vision algorithms? Not that many, maybe none. Okay, what you actually do, so it's like your mobile phone. You make a picture, or in this case, top view of a tomato plant. But the goal is not the picture. The goal is to extract information out of that picture. So for instance, you can calculate the number of pixels that are green, which gives you an indication of the biomass of a plant. Or even more specific, you can calculate the number of leaves. And this is a different number compared to its competitors, you could say. But that's only a single moment in time. We are searching for those plants that perform during their lifetime. So in this case, I'll show you a short animation. It's just the lifetime of one single plant in our facility. 
plant is growing, we have six different angles, six, six views on that plant, and that plant is slowly growing over time. And actually, because it's not about really the images, it's about the information, we are extracting over time, so days are on the uh, x-axis, on the y you can see the biomass, and the plant is getting bigger. But other plants are growing maybe more rapidly, or they get taller without much biomass, and for, that's another story, but we also have been studying how the plants start flowering and how the fruits are developing. I'd like to t uh, take you with me to some actually anecdote, personal anecdote. There's a dip in the graph at day 40. So we had a request from the, you probably know it, Clockhouse, the children's documentary series, and they said we would like to come over to your greenhouse. We will arrive on Monday. So in the weekend, we started cleaning the greenhouse, we prepared everything, and then on Saturday, they were supposed to come on Monday, the pump failed, the watering system failed, the plants were getting in trouble on Sunday, we asked them to come one day later, the plants were not shrinking, but actually the leaves were dropping. So the plants were getting into a stress phase. Um, if you look at the Clockhouse documentary, search for those shots where you see, hmm, that plant looked a bit weak. That's this plant at day 38. But then we fixed the pump, we watered the plants, and it's difficult to kill a tomato, and then it got back again. But then we thought, what would you gain if we would not only grow the plants in reality, like on the left, what would we gain if we grow the plants virtually? Because within our university, there is a big group of experts that has been growing virtual plants, you could say for decades. And they have been also working on climate models within greenhouses. And so we decided to bring these two together. So it's like the physical tomato growing being studied with all kinds of fancy tools, link that to the plant modelers. And then I'll show you actually the same graph of plants growing, but in this case actually in a virtual greenhouse, which looks quite to our uh, real greenhouse. So over time, plants are also growing virtually. On the right, you can even see the tomatoes emerging at a certain moment in time. And you can see growth rates. And there actually our focus is at, at the moment. Because if you have like, enormous amounts of genotypes, new varieties that might perform excellent, you would like to screen them in our greenhouse, and we can figure out which of those varieties perform really well. But then we would like to know, are those best performing varieties also growing fine in another greenhouse? So we need to do another experiment. And then, that's the environment actually, then we would like to know, are those varieties growing fine in the winter? compared to the summer? Or are they growing in Spain, for instance, in the similar speed with the similar juicy fine tomatoes? And this is an equation that you will see it all over, actually. We got a lot of genotypes. We got a, an enormous amount of different environments. And then you get some kind of phenotype, which in the end is your target, you could say, the ideal plant, the most tasty tomato. But in the environment, also if we make it relevant for a grower, a grower also has a big impact on its phenotype. He will not call it the phenotype, he will simply call it the tomato probably, and he sells it. But he needs to decide, am I going to harvest now? What will be my yield in two weeks from now? What if I remove the leaves now? Will that affect my yield in two weeks from now? And all these different scenarios can be predicted potentially with the digital twin concept. And one crucial aspect about plants is that plants grow if you put them in the light. Different light conditions definitely give a completely different plant. So if you, for instance, extend the day by using LED lighting, that has a big effect on your overall yield, plant quality, but also the sun itself, or a cloudy day, has a big effect. So last March, we had a beautiful month suddenly and all our experiments 
were doing completely different things in one month before. And that's difficult to predict. A grower doesn't know the weather two weeks ahead. You need to be able to adapt. Because light is actually what enables a plant to grow. So if you have a layered plant, like a tomato, the, the light is coming from above, hitting the top of the leaves, so the red part is where the light really hits the leaves. The further down you get into the plant, the less light hits those leaves. But if you would pack your plants together, then you have something like a canopy where the light inter um, interaction is very complex. So if you put your plants further away, all plants get more light, but your overall yield will go down if you look from a grower's perspective. So this is something that we take into account in this model that we are developing. So if you look at a regular day in the virtual greenhouse in this case, I can tell you then in the morning, sun comes up, you can get all kinds of different shading effects. So maybe some plants remain longer in the shade than others. So if you get a growth difference, you also need to know maybe that's caused by the fact that they are simply in the shade. As soon as they are growing, they start competing. So you might have an edge effect in your trial. That's crucial to realize. And if you then, over time, you can watch your plants actually growing, then you need to also think about what is the artificial lighting actually doing on my plant and how does this uh, interfere with your growth curve. And now actually the fascinating thing comes when you talk about virtual plants. If we then zoom in to the current situation of your canopy, you know, plants being quite packed together, this cannot be done in reality. So we can actually go back in time, we can go back to the starting point where that plant emerged, change virtually the settings, for instance mimic suddenly the, the sun conditions in Spain, change the greenhouse design, change the spacing and rerun the experiment again. And that is something that cannot be done in reality, that can only be done virtually. But there's one key element. If on the right your real uh, tomato plant is growing within certain conditions, then your virtual counterpart, so the, the digital version, needs to mimic exactly how it grows in reality. If that's not tuned, if that's not fine, then the whole virtual uh, adventure doesn't work. So coming to the end, I really hope that one day, soon, at least a few of you will visit this greenhouse and I'll show you around. And even better, I hope that within the upcoming years, a few of you will join our team to explore this topic. Thank you.